say peace be unto you. Hallelujah. Praise, praise and honor and glory be unto you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the Most High God, the Spirit of knowledge, the Spirit of power, the Spirit of understanding, the Spirit of wisdom. Oh, lead us even right now, even as we share this word, Lord. Help us every step of the way to be able to articulate what you want to convey, Lord. Father, Lord, I humble myself, Lord. I decrease in my sh this flesh in me, be decreased so that the Spirit may rise up. Holy Spirit, we are fully depending on you. For we know that you are the Spirit and you know what the Father desire, who is the Spirit. May yeah, we um, not only meet the expectation, may it be exceeding above that we can even think and ask for, to the glory of the Father. For we are here ambassadors, Lord. Oh, to do the Father's will. We are here as servants to serve, to serve you, Father, and to serve the body of Christ wherever that you have put us and designed for us to serve, Lord. Let your will be done, we ask in the name of Jesus. Let your will be done in our midst tonight in the name of Jesus. Let the name of our Lord God be exalted and be magnified and be glorified after we've done all. Let him alone receive the glory and the honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Tonight, my brothers and sisters, um, I'm going to share a, a topic which may not be a popular topic i'm sharing this based on this understanding that i receive during um my regular bible study time on the 10th of this month in matter of fact 10 10 23 and when i read that scripture literally it that particular part that we're going to it's going to be the focus point tonight it really opened up and caused me to see it in a different and ask question and through the question I was able to get a better understanding and i pray that i will be able to um relay that to you tonight and i pray also you will pray that the Holy Spirit will give you more understanding. We always encourage everyone who comes on this platform, whatever we preach, whatever topic that we share, we ask you, we encourage you to go go in, in deeper into it. Ask more questions. Let the Holy Spirit, let the Lord God give you more revelation. And then in if uh, any time you have revelation, you want to testify and share or through you could even um send us like a, a a text message through whatsapp or even in the comment section in the youtube there's a place where people can leave comment you can put a little comment there if the lord have given you you know additional revelation and we do encourage that and uh, we would love to hear from you also from this platform remember we are in this together it's not just us who come and give that we, we we don't know it all we we whatever we get is from the word and whatever the holy spirit whatever understanding we receive for that time and trust me 
the lord doesn't give everything to us all at one time sometimes he gives you a little bit of this he might give another person a little bit of that and it's one topic and we come together we get a bigger picture it's all about the kingdom of god the kingdom of god must move forward and it's a kingdom of multiplication we should not be stagnated especially when it comes to the word and knowing the word because the more we know the word the more we know who the Lord Jesus is and who our Savior and who uh, the, um, our Father is and, and more about the kingdom that we belong to. We belong, when we come to Christ, we belong to a new kingdom. And that's the kingdom of God. We are in this world. We are not of the world. So therefore, we need to know where we come from. How can we say we are from a country and a place that we don't know anything about and the lord is ready and always willing to reveal to us as long as we have interest interest in where we are who we are where we come from he will always show us having said that tonight my brothers and sisters the topic i'm going to share it has to do with the notion of We've heard that there are many who have preached, uh, who have written books about this topic, about once safe is always safe. And I'll come to tell you tonight, based on the revelation, based on the understanding that I received on the 10th of October, I'm going to say, based on the scripture, and we will share tonight, one safe is not always safe. I'm going to say it again. Once safe is not always safe. Salvation, we know the Bible tells us that the salvation, we must work out our salvation with fear and trembling. So therefore, we have to work our salvation. One, just because a person accept Christ as, as their savior, or maybe they have said the prayer and asked oh, Jesus to come into their heart and maybe they truly repented of their sins and everything, gone through all that. But that the person accept Jesus Christ as savior, you may say, okay, that's it. This person's going to heaven, that's it. It's a one-way ticket to heaven. I come to tell you that just because one accepts Jesus as Lord and Savior, it is not a guarantee to heaven. It is not. I know what we are discussing tonight is not popular, but it's necessary. It is necessary because it is in the Word. It is necessary so that many who would not have this false um um doctrines will not follow false teachings let us i want us to use um traveling as an analogy let's say you want to travel and you make reservation to secure a seat let's say on about you want to travel by plane from the time that you say you want to travel you're making on um, travel arrangement a lot could happen even after you purchase a ticket, a lot could happen. Sometimes the airline may bump, could bump people out because sometimes they overbook. In addition to that, so that, that's something, you know, on the airline and they will have to recom make recom um, compensate for that. But what I really want us to focus on is that in addition to other things that could happen, the airline itself has guidelines or rules to follow. Not just the airline, just in general, when some there are some laws that that is uh, that applies specifically when one is, a person is traveling um of by plane there's certain especially after certain um 9 11 there's a lot of rules and regulations that came into play in terms of what you can pack 
you know especially if you what you're taking on the airplane you you cannot take a, a certain ounce it, it, the, the, if you're taking any liquid it has to be a, a certain size there's all kinds of rules and regulations and then i don't know if anyone pay attention to that when they purchase a ticket they have all these things people are supposed to read them and if anyone think that they they're going on board a plane without abiding to the rules they can keep that person out if someone insists like oh i have my bottle of 12 12 ounce i'm not gonna throw it out i must carry it in. they that in itself just one simple thing itself even though they have a, a person have a, a, a purchase a ticket they have a boarding pass and without following the rules that could keep them out that could stop them for from boarding that plane so now if man on this earth and this is one one example there are so many other examples in life about rules and regulations even you know when we go to our jobs they give us rules and regulation they give us the do's and the don'ts we just use using traveling as an analogy where they have the do's and the don'ts that we must follow even though a person may say well i purchased my ticket way in advance i'm guaranteed a, a seat oh yeah but you are not guaranteed that you will board that plane until every rules and regulations have been abide with if someone decide that they want to break the law, they want to break the rules, then they will not board that plane. So if we're talking about what men set in place in the natural, so much more that also is place in the spiritual. That's what I said just because a person accepts jesus christ as their lord and savior does not guarantee heaven because the bible put things in place there are there are there are commandments there are rules they write their guidelines there are laws there are precept and, and and principles that we must follow now that we accepted christ now that we have now to have to make preparation why would jesus say that we have to work out our salvation the bible said we must work our salvation with fear and trembling if this was guaranteed if we were guaranteed once we accept jesus as lord and savior we're guaranteed in heaven then what are we working uh, out with fear and trembling that fear and trembling means there's a possibility that a person who accept christ as their lord and savior there's a possibility that person may not make it to heaven if certain conditions are not abide with and it's not adhered to and the bible is clear on that that's what's very important we have to read the word we cannot just repeat after someone else we cannot just hear what people are saying we gotta go to the word ourselves and allow the holy spirit the one who will lead us to all truth to lead us to guide us we know we need to know the truth the bible says we shall know the truth and the truth shall make us free this tells me the ones who do not know the truth they are in bondage there's bondage when there's no truth people who are not walking in truth they are in prison prison the bible also said my people they are they are perished because of lack of knowledge knowledge is power if we really want to have power we got to know this god we got to obtain we have to acquire knowledge and we cannot bypass the holy spirit or the word of god we have to be attentive to the word to the spirit in order for us to obtain this knowledge we have to be obedient to the word
just like i said in as an example of someone was traveling if a person does not follow the rules just having a ticket or a boarding pass will not guarantee them entrance in of the aircraft so we say so much more it is in the kingdom jesus said it is not for those who are saying lord 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 let's go into the word what jesus said in in matthew matthew 17 jesus said in plain english as this bible here is in english we are reading it but we know the bible is in so many was translated in so many different languages that is to help others who 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 be able to read the bible and understand it in their own native language so that no one can accuse god of being unfair he provides all kind of means for us to obtain this knowledge to obtain this understanding because he doesn't want any to perish hallelujah in matthew 17 verse 21 starting from verse 21 how be it this kind goes not out by prayer and fasting and and while they abode in galilee jesus said unto them the son of man shall be betrayed into the hands of men and they shall kill him and the third day he shall be raised again and they sh shall kill him the third day shall, and they were exceeding sorry no i'm sorry it's not 17 it's Matthew 7. <laughs> That's why I say it's not really what we are discussing now. It's Matthew 7. Uh huh. Matthew 7, verse 21 to 23. Not everyone that said unto the Lord, 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 shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Jesus saying it here in plain, simple English. And Jesus is not talking about this. this Jesus is not talking about to unbelievers. He's talking about to the followers. So if somebody is saying, Lord, Lord, this means that somebody who's already come to Jesus, who's acknowledging Jesus, who's calling Jesus Lord. So this is not a stranger. This is not an unbeliever. And Jesus yet is telling this to the believers. This, Jesus is telling this to us today. This is for us also. Jesus is telling us, it's not everyone who's saying, Lord, Lord, who will enter in the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. So it's not just because we accept Jesus Christ and say, Jesus, come to my heart, I repent of all my sins, you know, in my Lord, saying, I'm a Christian, I'm born again, now I'm going to heaven. No, Jesus is telling us, we got to do the will of the Father. So get I'm um, coming to Christ, accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior is not guaranteed to heaven. So the topic tonight, once saved is not always saved. And we will see as we go further into other scriptures. Um verse 20 um 21. We in Matthew 7, verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will, and then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye, ye that work iniquity. So you see, it's not. It doesn't matter what miracles one has performed in the name of Jesus. Jesus have to know the person. The Father has 
the way that Jesus know the, the 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 person is the person who's doing the will of the Father because that's that's all Jesus cares about the Father. He cares about the Father, the will of the Father, the name of the Father, the kingdom of the Father. He comes to us so that he may present the Father to us. Reconcile us to the Father. He's about the Father's business. And if we're not about the Father's business, then there's, there's really no, no relationship between us and Jesus. If we are not about his Father's business. So it's not enough. For anyone to have done all these things, all these work, all these miracles and all that is good and well. I'm sure their peers and everybody who are around there applauded them, probably give them all kind of trophy and on all kind of awards saying that they are this big woman of God, big men of God. All this is for this earth here. But when it comes to the kingdom of God, there's a different standard. The Lord doesn't look out on the outward. He searches the heart first. He knows the heart. He knows the heart that's been deceived man. They cannot deceive God, but they deceive themselves and deceive one another. Oh, yes. And many could applaud. Many could just you know, um, talk about it and write in the newspaper about it and also social media. Great woman of God, great men of God, great miracle, great works. Okay, great, 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 great. It's all great for this work. Will it stand before the Lord on that day? Will the Lord Jesus Christ say, well done? Will he say, or will he say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity? And then now we see all of them in this passage, the, the the people were saying, oh, but I did all this. I did all that in your name. Okay. <laughs> okay, good and well. I'm still going to say, depart from me if I never knew you. He didn't take the time to really know me, to have intimate with me. He didn't really um follow the rules and, and the commandments. You did not obey. You did not um, honor my father. Yes, you might have received honor. You might have given honor to others, to each other. But did you honor my father? Hallelujah. Glory be to his name. So it's not enough to guarantee a flight to the kingdom. That kingdom, that flight to the kingdom of God, uh, the Lord God will, will, will the one who do the, the, the heart search for that. There is no back way. There is no side way. There's only one way. It's through Jesus Christ. And everybody got to go through. Go through. Everybody. Every single one of us. That's the reason, my brothers and sisters, that we must work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We should not take it for granted to think the salvation and take it lightly and think that, you know, oh, yeah, once saved, always saved. That's a lie. It is not biblical. It is false teaching. This doctrine of once save, always save. It is false teaching. It is contrary to the word of God. It is contrary. Let's let's take a look at um Exodus. I want us to look at Exodus chapter 32. We're in 32. And verse 32, verse, verse 32, verse, 30, verse 32 to 33. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee. Out of thy book, which thou hast written. And the Lord say unto Moses, Whosoever have sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. And my brothers and sisters, this bring us to the topic tonight. And this bring us to the topic tonight where I was reading on October 10th, 10-10, 2023, 
I was reading from Revelation chapter 3. And the focus verse to 9 is verse 5. And that's where the topic came about for tonight. I just want us to go there now and read Revelation chapter 3 verse 5. And read it very attentive and very careful because I've read this passage before many times before. But this particular time, this jumped at me. And I had to stop. And I stayed on it. And I meditate on it. And I ask the Lord question. And then that's when you see, we just read from, from um, Exodus 32, chapter 32, verse 32 to 33. The Lord answered. And his answer is always solid. Listen to this. Revelation 3. Chapter 3, verse 5. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name. Are we following? I will not blot out his name. Now, I want us to pause on that. This is Jesus speaking. He said, he that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. Those who overcome. Overcome what? Overcome sin. Overcome tribulation. Overcome temptation. Those who stayed in faith. Those are the ones who stayed and 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 um stay in obedience to the word and did the will of the Father. Those they were overcomers, and there's blessing for the overcomers, and that's another different. That's a topic for another diff a different time. But tonight I want us to focus on the part that with Jesus talking about that those who overcome that He will not blot out brought out his name out of the book of life he will not blot out he will not blot out his name out no so that's where it hit me i said he will not blot out his name out so he will not erase out his name out so that qu the question came to me if the name can be blocked out this means the name was already written in do you understand me my brothers and sisters there are many who think that once you save you always save and your name is written in the book of life yes Many names can be written in the book of life. This came to me. This understanding came to me as I'm asking this question. Say, Lord, you say you will not blot out his name out. You will not blot out his name out of the book of life. So this means there was a name. There are certain names that in the book of life that can be blot out. There's certain names, there's some names who are in, they can be out. Do you understand me, my brothers and sisters? Then it all, it, it all started to come to play. Why the Bible said we should work out our salvation with fear and trembling? Because there is a great possibility the ones who even got their name written in the book of life can be brought out out because jesus is saying the overcomer he is not going to blot out the name out it's not just blot out so he's not gonna blot out out their name out this means their name will be in this means there's some name who are in can be blot out 
this is where I am with you tonight, my brothers and sisters. This is what I want to stress out to you, my brothers and sisters. This should bring great fear and trembling in working this salvation. This salvation must work out until the very end. It's not just one save. We always say we say a little prayer and that's it. Everybody got a ticket. They're going to heaven. We saw what God was telling Moses. Even when Moses was trying to plead for the children of Israel said, Oh no, Lord, don't do that. If you going to, Moses was really bold and you know, he really loved the children of Israel because he requested and said, no, if you're going to do this to them, then blot my name out. God said, no, it's not for you to tell me who to blot out, not to blot out. The ones who have sinned against me, yes. So their names were blot, who are written in. Their names were written in the book of life. And there are names also that will, will not remain there till the very end. Hallelujah. This is very crucial, my brothers and sisters. This is very important in the life of a Christian. This is very important. This is very serious. I take this very seriously, my brothers and sisters. Jesus said the ones who are overcomer, he went on to say in verse 5, he said, I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. And that's where we should always endeavor. This is where we should be going. 